Hello, parents. I really wish I could say, hey, it's good to see you, but I can't see you. I just see a, a green light that I'm staring at um, so you can see me. So hello from the youth room, came downstairs. I was kind of laughing on my way down here and I made a joke and I said, you know, this is how intuitive this um, online social thing is for me right now. I feel really weird recording this in my office where people can hear me. So I got to go to like the corner of the basement and close the doors. So, you know, I'm just uh, more private. So hopefully I'll get used to this in the next little bit. Um, big congratulations on surviving your first week in quarantine with your children. So far I've heard everyone um, is alive. So that's great. Hope you're doing well. I am doing okay. I, um, yeah, I, uh, I accidentally bought this kind of pop. If you've ever had this before, it's really gross. I don't recommend it, but you know what? We're in quarantine, so what are you going to do? You just got to drink it. So, yeah, anyways, here I am in the youth room, uh, drinking gross pop, but, uh, I'm just going to jump right on in. Uh, one of the things that I constantly say, uh, which you probably have heard me say, is that I am your partner. Um, as parents, you are the primary disciple makers of your children, and as a church, uh, we are your partner. So while you're doing um, this work and being influential over your kids, you are never alone. So the church, we're always here. So I'm just going to take like a step back and just uh, give a brief explanation for how we might understand the, the family and church relationship. So children are born to parents most of the time. And sometimes we might hear a parent say like, oh, my child is on loan to me from God. So just meaning that God has entrusted families with this child. And they believe that this child um, is their responsibility to raise their kids to, to know the Lord and help them develop a relationship with Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. And ultimately this child belongs to God. So typically, especially when children are born into a Christian family and in our church, we um, have a celebration of baptism. Now it's here where we declare um, promises um, to the family, to that child. We declare the church will work with parents to help to raise their children in the faith. So as a youth pastor, I'm always trying to connect with parents. Um, the church, we're your partner, we have the same goal. We all want your kids to know Jesus, to love Jesus, to follow Jesus, to hope in Jesus, to live for Jesus, to have that relationship with Jesus, to tell others about him, to join him in his mission as he brings redemption and restoration to the world. And it's just such a joy for our church to live into those promises and to be together. So there's no silver bullet. You can do everything right. And you can still have a kid who doesn't want to follow Jesus. You can do everything wrong and still have a kid who worships the Lord. There's a guy in our denomination. I really respected him, or I still respect him. Uh, his name is Sid Hilma. He used to be the leader of a faith formation ministry here. And so he's one of the main youth people. And um, he's this guy who knows everything and he would have done everything right. And I heard him speak one time about that and telling us, that he has a child who does not follow the Lord yet. So while there's no silver bullet in this, there still are things that parents that you can do um, in your homes that are effective for developing your kids' relationship with the Lord. So over the course of this social isolation, I'll be releasing a video every Monday, about five to ten minutes. Maybe I'll have a better pop next week. Who knows? Um, and just with some information um, on youth culture, um, topics that you can talk about with your kids and how to talk to them about it, um, just tips um, for developing um, your child's faith. So today I'm just going to focus a little bit on the importance of developing routines in your home for faith formation. So I've had these conversations with you in the past couple years and there's always something that comes out because one very common and um, important routine that happens to be pretty rampant in our church is family devotions after supper. And I've heard that um, all of you are 
it's really important for you to maintain this and you're actually really good at it, you know, when the kids are young because they're all home. But then a lot of you have lamented to me, you know, we tried to do this, but then when the kids get older, they have sports and they have jobs, they have friends. And so it gets much more difficult to have this routine you know, of a family devotional. Um, and so I actually remember one time that one of you called me because we had a meeting or something that evening and you just said, you know what, all of my kids are home. We're all home. That never happens. Is it okay, you know, if we if we postpone this? And of course I said, yes, like go for it. Um, and so, so we wanted to bless that. So this is a season where everyone is home. And so it is a way for us to cultivate that habit again. So here's what we're going to do um, at our church. We're going to do a family devotional challenge. You heard me. A family devotional challenge. We're going to start today. Now this is for everyone in our church. This video is going to be sent out to um, parents, um, but it'll still be on the email and on the Facebook page. And so um, if you're hearing this, you're welcome to join in on this conversation uh, if you have kids or not. Here's how it's going to work. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, evenings from around 7 to 7.30, I will post something on Trinity's Facebook page regarding the family devotional challenge. And you are all hereby challenged to take a picture of your family doing a devotion. And along with that picture, you can please write a summary of what you talked about as a family. And if you comment, I or we will put your name into a draw. So if you participate on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with the dinner table challenge, then your name will go into a basket three times. And at the end of the week, we will draw a name. And whosoever family's name gets drawn will get a $30 gift card to a local restaurant near the church neighborhood to be used for your next dinner. Hopefully we can do a skip the dishes or something to go. And then I know there might be some issues with potential restaurants closing and then stuff. And so we'll figure something out. One way or another, we will get you $30 worth of food for your meal. So now if you're thinking, hey, wait, I don't have Facebook or I don't want it to put pictures of my kids up there. Um, that's totally okay. Uh, you can just write a comment without a picture, or you can take a picture of the devotional book. Another option is you can send me an email with your story, and I can post it and add you to the draw. So for some ideas for family devotionals, if you don't have some already, you can check our website. I will be speaking with Jen, our administrator, um, to put some stuff up there, some that are online and some that are at the church. If you're interested in the ones that are at the church, then we can arrange um, a pickup or a drop-off, hopefully. We'll see how things go. So I'd like to just pray with you to end our time together. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we just want to say and declare that you are a good God, that you are a sovereign God, and all of this is under your control. And we also just say and declare and believe, Lord, that you can make really good things happen out of bad things. So, Lord, during this, this thing that's going on, we know that you are at work in it. So, Lord, we just pray that as your church, we can join you and we can help to bring restoration and healing and, and redemption to, to the world. Lord, we... I just want to pray that you empower and equip the families in our church to remain connected to each other and together as a family. May this just be a season and a time where we can look back on that it was fruitful, that it was good, that we grew to know you, to know you more, and that we grew as a family more. And this can be a positive time to look back on. Lord, I just continue that. I just pray that you continue to work and you continue to be real and you can continue to just exceed all expectations and that um, everyone um, who's part of this church um, will um, just be have their hearts set to give you glory and and honor your name. Lord, we thank you for being so, so good to us and for your faithfulness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Have a great week.